Learning without piety produces a proud device. Piety without learning produces a useless one. St. John Baptiste de La Salle. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today, we will consider the life of St. John Baptiste de La Salle, who, despite coming from a wealthy family himself, sold all his wealth and resigned from his high position in the church in order to dedicate his life for the education of the poor. Let us begin his story. As a young 17th century Frenchman, John had everything going for him. Scholarly bent, good looks, noble family background, money, and a refined upbringing. When he was only 11 years old, he received the tonsure. For those of you who don't know, the the tonsure is when one becomes a cleric. So at already 11 years old, he was a cleric of the church. And he started at this time his preparation for the priesthood, to which he was ordained at 27 years old. He seemed assured then of a life of dignified ease and a high position in the church considering his wealthy background and incredible intelligence. But God had other plans for him, which were gradually revealed to him in the next several years. During a chance meeting with a Monsignor, he became interested in the creation of schools for poor boys, where he was stationed in France. Though the work was extremely distasteful to him at first, he became more involved in working with the deprived youths. Once convinced that this was his divinely appointed mission, John threw himself wholeheartedly into the work, left home and family, abandoned his position as canon of the local city, or rather resigned his position, gave away his fortune and reduced himself to the level of the poor to whom he devoted his entire life. The remainder of his life was closely entwined with the community of religious men he founded, the Brothers of the Christian Schools. This community grew rapidly and was successful in educating boys of poor families using methods designed by St. John. It prepared teachers in the first training college for teachers and also set up homes and schools for young delinquents of wealthy families. And the main motivation behind doing well in one's classes was to please God, to be virtuous and to please God. In today's world, we always look for rewards for doing well in our work or doing well in our classes. For them, for his students, the main reason why they wanted to do well in their studies was because it would help them to be virtuous and to please God. What a lesson for all of us. Yet even in his success, John did not escape experiencing many trials. He had some heart-rending disappointment and defections among his disciples, bitter opposition from the secular schoolmasters who resented his new and fruitful methods, and persistent opposition from the Jansenists of his time, whose moral rigidity and pessimism about the human condition John resisted vehemently all his life. The new fruitful methods that they are speaking of is the classroom setting. Back in before his time, most education took place one-on-one, the teacher and the student. St. John really was the first, one of the first at least, to really push the idea of a classroom setting. More than one student in the room, you know, a school for many students, grade levels, uh, such things as that were things that he put forward and that he pushed and that he taught teachers of how to teach in this way. He was also the first in at least his area to start using the vernacular, so the local language, rather than teaching in Latin, which of course helped many people, certainly would have helped me since my Latin is not good. Afflicted with asthma and rheumatism in his last years, he died at age 68 on the same day that we commemorate the death of our Lord on Good Friday. 
and was canonized in 1900 and named the patron saint of teachers by Pope Pius XII in 1950. So you students out there do take the opportunity to wish a happy feast day to your teachers. And if your parents happen to be your teachers, then you can wish a happy feast day to them as well. From the life of St. John, we learn to take our studies seriously, not because of the reward we receive from our studies, but because we know that doing well in our studies is pleasing to God and what God desires for us at this time. Tomorrow we will look at the life of St. Eubald, a bishop of Umbria, who recognized that the only way he would be successful in his duty is to be dedicated to prayer. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. John Baptiste de La Salle, pray for us.